Yes. Well, welcome back to another episode of Off Pitch 74. Um, just to reintroduce ourselves again, my name is Diane Antonopoulos. Say your last name again. Antonopoulos. Um, I'm Kat, and welcome to Off Pitch. Oh, oh, wait, I remembered it this time. You got it. Off, Off Pitch 74. 74. There we go. Say it with me. Off, Off Pitch, pitch 74. 74. For the people in the back. <laughs> yeah, so... We are just two front office personnel here from San Jose Earthquakes who, one, like to talk a lot. We like to talk to a lot of other people. So now we're just talking to everyone and recording it so you all can hear what kind of goes on uh, here at Avaya Stadium off the pitch with our players, front office, um, and everything under the sea. <laughs> that made- <laughs> oh, that was funny. I didn't know where to go with it. It's okay. I didn't either. Okay. Just watching you put a puzzle together in your head out loud. And I couldn't do it. Yeah, we'll move on to game day. Great. So this Saturday, we are playing Houston Dynamo here at 7.15, so please be here on time. The first 5,000 people into the stadium um, will receive a co-branded water bottle on behalf of our presenting sponsor of the night, San Jose State University. Uh, We will also be celebrating um, South San Jose Neighborhood um, on behalf of our Wells Fargo Neighborhood Nights. Be sure to stick around in your seats at halftime. We will also be honoring um, a few uh, San Jose State University's teams, women's soccer, gymnastics, and softball, to recognize them on their respective title wins this year. And today on the show, we will be interviewing two of our front office personnel, two of our team admins, and one of them, Ricky Dorego, is actually a former San Jose State alumni and former player for San Jose State men's university soccer team. And Mearns is not as impressive, Yeah, but also on the show. And we'll also just be here. Yes. Please introduce yourselves, our newest guests. Thank you. Uh, Ricky <laughs> Derego. So, so formal. formal. So excited to be here. So excited to be here. Ricky Derego. Did you uh, have to read your name? Is that what you're looking down? Yes. Yes. I am reading directly <laughs> off of a script, and that's how I will talk today. Notes. <laughs> and I am uh, Sean Mearns. We are the team administrators with Quakes. Thank you for having us here. How long have you guys both been I feel been like working? I'm on like a... Uh, Late night talk show. It's huh? just like Sorry. so like robotic. Like yeah. I am Mertz. I am, I am Ricky. Sean Mertz. Usually we organize this stuff. We don't normally participate. So are you so uncomfortable right now? Not that bad. I'm medium comfortable, I think. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Medium I need to get in a role here and then we'll be all right. This actually we were talking about this might be one of the more entertaining ones just because we're actually friends with you guys. Yeah. We're in yeah. the players. Yeah. We just kind of make them really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and they yes. don't quite know our humor yet, so okay. I think yeah. it's just yeah. like so mean. Yeah, your humor takes some getting used to for sure. Thanks, so. Ricky. That's actually how that's actually how Martin and I bonded was over murder. Yes. Over what? Murder. Oh yeah, we love murder podcasts and books. murder shows and murder books. Our and... creepy book club. Yes. So how long have you guys worked for the Quakes? What positions, roles? I know you have different ones, Ricky. Yeah, so I started in t- the beginning of 2012. Um, I started as an intern, and basically my job was to almost basically I was be the handler for Victor Bernardes and Marvin Chavez at the time. That's so, so good. My first day, the guy I was interning with basically dropped me off at Hertz and was like, hey, these guys need to get a rental car and then go look for housing. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're coming with me, right? And he's like, no, you're on your own. And so... Is it because you could speak Spanish? Yeah, because I could speak Spanish. And so... <laughs> you were just thrown into the I was the thrown into den. the fire. <laughs> and so I'm driving around with these two Hondurans all through San Jose, and I had never really been to San Jose. I grew up in San Ramon, but I had... I've just come down for games and stuff. I've never, like... I didn't know where anywhere. It's a whole different world. Yeah, so I'm just driving around with these two. And Wait, how intimidated were you when you saw Bernardes? Oh, I was very intimidated. You're like me? I was this like, guy? Yeah, all this day? guy <laughs> is going to kill me. And he has a very, like like very distinct way of speaking and so i it took me a while to the dialect's different yeah for sure. figure out what he was saying to me too so uh yeah that was i almost quit my first day like, i was like i got home and i think i told my mom i was like i can't do this anymore. i don't want to do this anymore so, so. you're basically like house hunting yeah on, was, like an episode of house yeah hunters. i was house hunters with marvin and victor so <laughs> that's that would have so been fun. actually a good kind of a good show to so uh, we'll make a note yeah, yeah. it was we'll uh, send in your audition tape ideas. yeah, yeah. Next access <laughs> International video. house hunting with 200. Oh, yeah, it was pretty fun. My favorite show. It was uh, interesting. And then, uh, yeah, I've just you know, been here ever since. And I did uh, Ricky's job for a couple years. And then um, now I no phone calls to do my job. My sister's calling. I need to put her on mute. Diane's dad called Diane's phone. podcast, too. <laughs> Is he calling in? Is he a phone in? <laughs> we have put a fan, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Long time See, we pull speakers. <laughs> we pull callers. Ricky, what about you? So I have also kind of an extensive history with the Quakes. Um, so I played for a very long... just resume. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. I'm going down CV. the line. You can so look up. I, I don't like looking at right you Right here. You gotta uh, look at me in the eyes. <laughs> don't look away. Right here, I won't. Okay. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, yeah. So 2012, I literally, I came back. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just looking at the ceiling. <laughs> yes. I don't like talking to you guys. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ricky, if you just want to turn and face the wall yeah. and talk to us. I think that's what's going to end up happening. We should move the camera to just be right here. <laughs> I can stare at a camera. Let's do that. Um, so, yeah, so I played for a long time. I came back to San Jose to start school again. I left school to go play. So once I got back into school, my buddy Brent and actually uh, Ramen at the time were selling tickets on game days with uh, our now ticketing director, Jacob, and ticketing manager, Adam. Um, and we just sold tickets on game day. It was a pretty sweet job um, in college. You get to sell tickets till halftime, get to watch every game. And this uh, was still at Buckshaw, half. right? It's still at Buckshaw, yeah, yeah. And summer came along. I had some free time. I asked if there was internships available. Finally got a chance to intern with the fan relations department. So um, I was there for a while. Fan relations kind of handles season ticket holders here with Quakes. So worked my way up there. Ended up at the front desk of all places, which I wasn't prepared for, but it definitely um, was Wait, a good job. You worked at the front desk? I did, Did yeah. you look down? You talk to <laughs> yeah, I don't like talking to people. No. Uh, no the I'm best pretty... first impression people yeah. walk into the quick office. See, the microphone, you put the, guy just you put the microphone in, the in front eye. of me and it gets a little weird, but I'm normally pretty good just shooting shooting the uh it's okay. no one can no one can even see that you're not looking at us. yes i know except but now you guys, everyone and you will know keep we just keep talking yeah. <laughs> oh, and then i from front desk to i went to fan relations after about a year and then i was at fan relations for three years and shout out to all my season ticket holders um that are listening we got the santians the castlemans the uh, wow. dustin ing in the corner over there we have did they sponsor um, you to say no, this? We no, haven't we gone. Just, we, we haven't even gone sponsored. They've been season yet. ticket holders since I got the job, so they've been with me since the beginning. Eddie Steele, all those guys. So um, it's uh, it's pretty cool to see them on game days. But um, and then finally got the opportunity right after my daughter was born. It, it was very surprising. Um, I was still on paternity leave at the time. The job opened up um, for Sean here in soccer ops. It's something I always wanted to do, and I actually. Got here really early the first day I got back at like 7 a.m. And I had to talk to my boss at the time, Heather, to tell her in person that I was applying for a different job the day I got back from paternity leave. <laughs> so it was a little messy, but I ended up getting an interview at 4 p.m. that same day. And it all moved pretty quickly, but it worked out. Nice. So you have a daughter now. And I you do. basically have like 20 other sons yeah. to take care of. So you just yeah. have like... A huge household now. Yeah, I joke around all the time that um, for my daughter and the players, I'm way more responsible for all of them than <laughs> I am for myself. So um, you have to pack her I'll diaper take, bag. Yeah, exactly. You have to pack their bag. And then I don't have my wallet or keys. But <laughs> every all their stuff. Taken she care wants of. orange slices. They want orange slices. <laughs> yeah. So you guys don't know this, but before we interviewed you guys today, I don't think a lot of people know what you guys actually do on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. So. We asked a lot of people in the office to kind of give us some feedback and just like, great. what do you guys think? When you see Ricky and Sean all day, what is it that you think that they nice. do? So we got some pretty good responses back from people. So we'll let you actually tell us what you do after people hear what people think you do. Right, and then right. you can correct them or say yes or no or yeah. I feel so, like we're slightly unclear on what exactly we do. So. We picked some of our favorites. So this one from Schleicher. In no, fan relations. Said it. Why? That's funny. Okay. <laughs> kind of, it's funny. Um, Fellow fan relations specialist. So this is what Schleich had to say. Ricky definitely sets up the Manny Petties for the wives <laughs> and girlfriends. <laughs> Burns doesn't do all that dirty work, but he finds them housing accommodations that are sort of bougie. But like MLS salary bougie. So we're talking Santana Row, not Willow Glen. <laughs> Ricky also fantasizes about the dubs a lot at work. He has his headphones in to pretend he's busy, but we all know he's working on his fantasy basketball lineup most of the time. That is actually true. <laughs> it's pretty close. Right. Yeah, actually, a lot of the guys live at Santana Row, so uh, it's 
pretty spot on. How many manicures and pedicures have you set up? The, what he missed there is I get to participate in those that I set up. What? So it's wow. pretty sweet. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. No. Oh. We don't set that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what a cush job. No, we don't Didn't set see that, that on the job no. description. What were some of your favorite? So this one's actually pretty simple from Adam McFarlane, uh, who is the birthday boy today. Uh, so he Happy says... Birthday, Adam. Ricky goes grocery shopping, then parks in the team bus parking spot right in front. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Mern's oh, yeah. Wor- and Mern's works out in the locker room with the academy kids. That's I all. Do. That's all you got. I do. After uh, my, my gym session at after 5 o'clock has been taken a little bit over by the uh, academy kids, so it's me and kids ranging from 14 to 18. So <laughs> When you work out in there, there in the academy with the academy kids, who gets to pick the music? Because it's always a little questionable I, after work. I, you can hear it yeah, up in the office. They're a bunch of bullies, so I put it in my <laughs> headphones because I don't want to get made fun of so, <laughs> what I'm listening to. So, yeah, I don't. I have my headphones oh, in and I can't hear what they're saying. So. I actually think it's Daniel Hicker, so if it's a little uh, questionable, then that makes sense. you can talk to Daniel. He's our uh, strength and conditioning coach. I think he's the one picking the music. We did have one more. Oh, Francis Lopez actually sent a very long list of things that he oh, thinks you guys His do. Were really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so that is a long list. Ricky and Mern's job descriptions: book first team flights. True or yes, false? Yes, correct. Correct. True. Personal chauffeurs for players who choose not to drive. Mm, gray area. When they first arrive, yeah, I would call as personal chauffeurs. Yeah, but once they get their car, they're on their own. Okay. Um, babysitters and dog sitters. Mm. Uh, with Flo, the dog sitter is probably pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Flo and his three dogs. But uh, he has three dogs. He has three dogs. Three dogs. Do you know the names? Uh, we do not. No, know. it's probably I'm, like a terrible dog sitter. Bastion. No. no, we have never. We I don't think we're qualified to be yeah, to that's, dog sit. That's his true. Dogs. We're not. It's a. I think we, it would be a very lengthy interview process to even pet his dogs. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. dog sitters. Yes. Yeah. Add okay. That um, over order food for the first team so they can feed themselves. You know what? Sometimes we do it for the benefit of the office and bring it up to the office. So. I was going to that's where I thought he was going for this. <laughs> there but, are times that when you guys order food downstairs, so people are listening, you guys do bring it up to share with the rest of the front office a lot, which yeah, is so, much appreciated. Because sometimes, you know, like uh, we usually don't have Tuesdays off, but this week Tuesday was off and we'd already ordered the lunch. And so we thought, you know, instead of just having it go to waste, we'd. Uh, bring it upstairs and let the office people uh office have people. at yeah. it yeah <laughs> we're, we're, the we're upstairs a people we're a different class have at it. yeah we might be above them <laughs> in terms really of cool. height <laughs> in the office but we're really below them the, the office folk <laughs> well, some Burns would bring i think a couple times last year i brought you some cookies yeah, yeah. i got cookies after a game and they were so bevo cookies are the so best warm. Pretty good. oh yeah. yeah that was good toss them in the microwave oh, for like put three them in the seconds microwave. they are amazing yes cookies for all <laughs> Shout out, by the way, most creative thing I've seen since I've been on the team. We when we were in Tucson, you yeah. guys know. By the way, the, his eyes just like lit up. He's you, so excited. He's actually looking <laughs> at you. I don't know what this is gonna be. You guys know the bagel toasters that oh, you drop the bagels yeah. in. Yes. When I got there, the you know the like hotels have those rock hard like cookies and everything. They just yeah. drop the cookie in that, oh, and it comes out the other side. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's Did crazy. You say double tree. Uh, no, no, the, the double tree hands you ta- cookies. I know what you're talking counter. about. Mm. Yeah. yeah, double tree has good cookies. They do. Have they good have a cookie cookies. warmer. Mm. But yeah, that was that was something I have not seen before. That this preseason, I don't think uh, now. It's every now time you I have go. Have a high standard. Yeah, every, every time I go, go to, to a hotel, people are gonna look at me crazy at the uh, continental continental breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else we got? Um, you have to tell the players when to get out of the locker room and onto the field. Yes, that is my job. As you may have seen in the previous Quakes Access, <laughs> they don't listen. He actually did write that. Okay. He's like, I see. I saw yeah. this on Quakes Access. They think it's really funny <laughs> to, and you know, if we if they don't get out on time, we get fined, you know, a couple thousand bucks. So I'm trying to get them out. And they just think it's hilarious to not listen to What's me. What's like your voice when you – like do you have a stern like dad Actually, voice? Actually, it's like, a good voice. Boys, everyone out of the room <laughs> it's now. It's not very stern. Actually, last year I uh, – I can't remember what game it was, but I I cracked really <laughs> I was bad. Say, is it your voice I cracked? went, one minute. And I have not heard the end of it ever since because it was really quiet and I cracked so bad. So, yeah. It was Quincy, so intense in the world. Wando, room. those guys never – they just – yeah, they just kill me every time. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get you guys out so you can warm up. I have enough time so you don't get injured. I'm oh, looking out so for you. Nice. you should I know. Just go with an air horn one day. Yeah. Like. Actually, actually, me and uh, Andy, our equipment guy, went on a, a tour 
to uh, Fulham at Craven Cottage, and there all they had was a little bell that the admin would hit. That's so, adorable. Yeah. He would That's hit, so polite. He yeah. hit the bell, and, go, and it would, it would just, that'd be like the five, three, one minute. So I'm like, we need to really get the bell so then they won't make fun of me anymore. But Cowbell. Yeah. Or just get like listen. a voice changer. I should. Be like, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice Yeah. Changer. Like Darth You Vader must leave in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You don't need the voice changer. You can do I it can yourself. Do it myself. Well, Francis's email basically wrote our podcast. Yeah. I know. Thank great. you, Francis. He's very observant. I want to go back to you getting players out of the locker room. Who takes the longest? Uh, Quincy. It's always Fatai. Quincy. Um, and then Harold is always the last coming out of the locker room. Like, right as a game Was that started. a pun? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no, but that would have been a good one. Yeah. So, Ricky, what is what do you do on game days? What game days, do yeah. What game days are actually pretty, pretty awesome. Game days are one of our easier days. Like we just have to make sure people are on time, getting out. And my main thing on game days, people might see me kind of going in and out of the stadium on game days, is mostly catering. Honestly, um, post game meal, and then What's we fun? usually have like a training session with non dressing players beforehand. So just doing that. Um, most of the work's done during the week, so um, game days are usually pretty easy, but. Yeah, our our jobs are they're they're so wide ranging. Um, we do things like everyone said, like get, getting groceries all the way to like immigration work. So it's like everything in between. Kind of our my family has dubbed me the the fixer um, because that's they every time they ask me what I do, they don't get it. They just are like, oh, so you just fix stuff. So like, yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. What if, okay, Marins, Now you get to de- what do you actually do? So on it depends on. <laughs> Yeah, ga- home game days aren't aren't the difficult. The away the away game away games are uh, so a lot more difficult. But you, Merns, you travel, and then Ricky, you yeah, stay behind so I, on road games. My yeah. main, I th- kind of look at one of my main jobs is the travel. So I d- I do the um, flights and hotels and buses and you know all that logistics just that goes up into those miles. Yeah, just flying back and forth across the country. Do you <laughs> use those miles when you take your one big trip every year? Uh I did use my Southwest points last year to go where did I go? Down to Mexico. So I use a lot of my Southwest points, which was nice. That's nice. Yeah, so that's a great great perk of the job. Um but yeah, I think my main responsibility on game day is um doing the roster and jersey exchange and making sure the roster because you have to fill it out by hand, so it's you know if, if you you know have the wrong guy in there or the wrong number, then the player isn't able to play. So um, just making sure all that's correct, and you go meet with the rest and the other team, exchange rosters. Um, and I've actually started; they're having us do the subboards now, which is weird. So this past weekend, I had to like when um, Shay came in for Joel, I think it was, so I had to enter in the numbers, and then the ref holds it up. So I was kind of panicking that I. Oh, when you said that, I pictured you being like a ring girl. In the no. <laughs> But just basically, that's what I have, and I, <laughs> I bring it up to the ref and give it to him, and I'm just like, oh, I hope I didn't enter the wrong number. That would be really bad, but I went three for three, so that was a good start. Oh, my, it means you're due for a my mistake. My subboard career, I know, I know. What do you guys have to do post-game, and is it difficult? Let's say the players have a really like tough game or tough loss or anything like that. Is it tough for you guys to then have to go and talk to them and do things where you yeah, just kind of have to continue I think on the, and push the through? I think the worst is um, like when you when you lose on the road because then you everyone goes back. Um, and you eat it, you know, you have a post-game meal at the hotel, and it's kind of night and day when you win and when you when you lose. Like, when you win, everyone's, you know, happy and joking around. When you lose, everyone's kind of down. And then I always have to tell them what time we're leaving the next day from the hotel, and they always shoot me dirty looks, especially if it's really <laughs> early in the morning. Um, I think, you know, a couple of times we've had to leave the hotel at, like, 6 or 7 in the morning on the East Coast, which is, like, 3 or 4 in the morning here, and... Uh, have you, you ever win? left anyone behind? Um, yes, I've left three yes. people behind. Actually, I <laughs> hate yes. we only heard about one. Yeah, so um, it was written on the board. My show. very <laughs> first road trip in in Tucson for preseason. This was like my first time in charge. I left. Um, we were leaving from the locker room. I think we were going back to the hotel, and I miscounted, and I left Shay, Salinas, and um, Ty Harden. <laughs> At the locker room. And so we'd like gotten out to the street and I get a call and I look down and it's Shay Salinas and I look back in the bus and I go, 
<laughs> so, was it like a home alone moment you just like counted all the heads yeah. like, we're all good we're all accounted for and the worst thing is you, there's nothing you could do because you have to tell the bus driver hey we need to turn around and go back and get these guys did you like have to go like secretly like whisper it to <laughs> yeah. him and not make a big announcement on the bus so, so I tried to do that and then when the guys got on the bus it was kind of obvious that I'd left them behind and they, <laughs> they were just hanging out in the locker room uh, and then the other one was we left our poor Charlotte um, in LA during preseason so Ricky and I went over to the airport right after the game so we were flying over there because we had to get all the what the bag tags and yeah we had to get there by 5 30 to set everything yeah. up and so i'm gonna put the blame on probably ron or derek our trainers <laughs> because we weren't out there easy to blame people yeah. who aren't here we were not at the at the stadium to make sure everyone was on the bus so we're at the at the airport everyone gets there we hand out all the boarding passes and someone comes up to us and goes hey here's charlotte's boarding pass and we're looking around and going wait where's charlotte <laughs> And we're like, did she get on the bus? And everyone was like, uh, I didn't see her. So what happened, we had changed the departure time and we forgot to mention it to poor Charlotte. And uh, so she was still at the stadium, like working away on her po- post uh, press release. <laughs> She's yeah. That's when I noticed is when I got an email with a press release from Charlotte <laughs> at there. the airport. And we were all trying to figure yeah, out where she really was at. But hard. they said that they wrote it on the board in the locker room, which she obviously was not in. in room, so <laughs> she was up in the press box working. So, yeah, but, that was a miscommunication. But our next our next flight, we got, I think, like two or three first class upgrades. So we gave one to Charlotte. So I think oh, she's okay nice. now. Yeah, you so made she, up for it. We made up for it. So <laughs> I think she, she had seat 1A. So everyone saw it when she got on. She was <laughs> chilling up in first class on the flight to Kansas City. She deserved that seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She did. So we'll end it on kind of a fun note or nice note. What has been your favorite moment with the team? Ever? Mine, mine's pretty Ever. easy. Mine mm. was, I mean, Minnesota last year. Yeah. Last game of the season. Um, all the, it's kind of all the work that you put into it, all the frustrations throughout the year to just have a moment to just yell out and scream and kind of enjoy it like oh, that. Yeah, was didn't fun. you just walk on the field yeah. and yell? Well, we were all on the field, yeah, after a while. We, we kind of sit in the same area with – the non-dressing players and stuff like that. So we all kind of ended up going on the field after the game. But. Yeah. yeah, I would say, um, yeah, probably the Minnesota game or the, um, what, this is a weird one, but uh, when this, the Stanford comeback when we won four to three, um, I actually missed both goals because I was walking down from the press box <laughs> down to the locker room. Um but just like I, I just still remember the roar of the crowd, like on the first yeah. one and then the second one, like it was just insane. And I wish I would have seen the goals, but uh, just like but being there was enough. Being there and like hearing just like the crazy reaction from the crowd, and then I, I was able to walk out right as the game was ending. So I saw that, and like people were just going nuts. So I think just you know being in front of fifty thousand people and the huge comeback, it was it was pretty cool. So one of those two, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, thank you guys so much for joining yes. us today. Thank Hope you guys. Act like you like weren't going to talk. I feel like you guys really. Do we do okay? Do we yeah. need to yeah, Tommy and approved? Nick? Yeah. So much better than yeah, Tommy yeah, and Nick. Yeah, these guys are kind of boring. <laughs> to be honest with you, so. you hear that, Tommy? You hear that, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you guys. All right, well, thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. you. All right, All right cool. Um, so, yeah, to end off today's <clears throat> Off Pitch 74 podcast, um, please feel free to tweet us questions, hashtag Off Pitch 74. Um, and we will try to ask as many questions as we can. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, go Quakes.